Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I want to sit down and talk to you about New Year's resolutions for 2021. And if you are at the stage where you're writing your New Year's resolutions, I urge you to stop. This is not the new normal, not quite yet. 2020 was a tough year for all of us. We're here, we survived it. So I urge you to consider that as your resolution for 2021 because surviving is good enough. 2021 might not be your year like previous years. And that might be because of COVID, but it might also be that you set New Year's resolutions that are unrealistic and short-sighted. I'm not here to put you off. I want you to go into 2021 with a realistic overview of the year ahead and with a positive outcome. So let's take a look at what we need to consider. The first one is mental health and stress. I am aware, I'm sure you are, that the aftermath of COVID-19 coronavirus is going to put a huge amount of pressure on individuals, families, healthcare systems with regard to mental health and people dealing with stress and what stress does to us and to our bodies and to our relationships and so on. I feel very stressed on numerous occasions for different reasons and I'm really having to be aware of that and look at the triggers and try and figure out what kind of works for me and us as a family as well. And I think that that's something that as individuals we're going to have to really connect with. And although mindfulness is a buzzword these days, I think that this is an area that will become very, very prominent in our lives, in our society, in our lifestyles. Trying to deal with stress and our own personal mental health, mental health journeys and how we can support each other will be really, really crucial. The next one is something that obviously is very dear to my heart. The effects of all of this on our children. And we have no real idea of how this is going to affect our children or has affected our children. Even with Mia, she's two and a half. She says masky whenever we go anywhere because she knows mummy and daddy have to wear masks. She wants to use the hand spritzer everywhere, which is obviously a good thing, but it's just part of her normal routine and her vocabulary. When you start really thinking about that, it is quite scary. And although she's so young, she doesn't necessarily know what's going on. I can only imagine the effects of someone who is a few years older than her and into their teenage years. The difficulty that it will have had on their education and their skill sets and their development as well. So that is also something that we need to really take into consideration and try and support our children and the children that you have in your life. Realistically, social distancing and lockdowns will continue far into 2021. Although there is a light at the end of the tunnel and there are vaccines out there and as of yesterday, they started vaccinating here in Iceland. Because of my age and my health, I will be very far down the priority list. And so it will be probably summertime before I actually get the opportunity to have a vaccine. However you feel about the vaccine, that is up to you. I highly suggest and recommend that you do your own research and proper medical research. Working online, working from home will obviously continue. This is something that is kind of like a future concept that because of the coronavirus, has been pushed on us a lot quicker than we were maybe expecting or ready for. It's something that people like me, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, whatever, we are used to. And actually I kind of live quite an isolated lifestyle, especially in my work. I tend to talk to you guys on a camera. We have got off very lightly here in Iceland. We have not had a lockdown, touch wood. My husband Ingmar has only worked from home for a few weeks at a time and we've coped with it all. We have Mia around, it's not too bad. We've just kind of learned to juggle everything as I'm sure you have as well. Online sales have increased in my shop. I've also had numerous students enroll in my programs 
and setting all of this up, working online and having a passive income and also different streams of income has definitely benefited me in this situation. Not that there's many benefits from it. I feel very lucky to have set those things up and to have worked hard to have pa streams of passive income in place. Of course, we are a normal family. We have income worries, we stress about money, we worry about the future. I fully understand you are not alone in that if you are also worrying about income and financial pressures. And that is something that unfortunately will be a reality next year and the years to follow. If you weren't budgeting before, you're probably doing it now or you're gonna be learning that sometime soon as well. Personally, I believe that having a cushion, a safety net, a rainy day fund is very, very important, especially if you have responsibilities like children. Paying the mortgage, paying off your car, paying off debts. I am very lucky that I don't have debt. I've paid it all off. I don't have to worry about that kind of thing, but I do have a child, a young child, and I work for myself. I am the only employee in my business. If I'm not working, then there's no work being done and there's no income coming in. And so I'm very conscious about income and about the future of that as well. I would recommend that you really sit down and look at how you spend money and if you have money to save, how that money can be saved as well. Now obviously we would all love to be making extra money. Anything from setting up a digital product shop, an Etsy shop, doing doorstep photography, can you monetize your hobby? Spend five, ten minutes, especially with your partner as well, and just do a brain dump, a possibility brainstorm of what you can be doing to make any extra money especially if it's passive income because that is a great way to make extra money because you are literally setting something up letting it roll and it makes money literally whilst you sleep and that's the goal isn't it 2021 will be a year to invest in yourself if you're not already. I spend quite a lot of my time researching, learning online, taking Skillshare courses, watching endless videos on YouTube that are useful. I set time blocks for myself so I don't end up wasting too much time and I stay focused on the things that I'm looking to learn. And then also remind yourself of what you have learned in this time and celebrate those wins and those goals that you've achieved. Investing in yourself is probably one of the best investments you can make and it will help with your future, your future skills and your future options as well. You might be in a position now where you're looking at retraining and they say that learning a trade is usually quite a good skill, especially when there are times like recessions. You might be in a situation where you are now overqualified for a lot of jobs. I personally have experienced this and I will link the video where I explain my story of the last recession. There is hope out there. I'm trying to be much more of the mindset these days that things happen for you and not to you. And now looking back on the last 10 years of my life and the things that have happened in it, they have happened for me, even though at the time they felt like they happened to me. Relationships. This is obviously a difficult area because right now I completely get that bickering is high, stress levels are high, pressure on each other can be really difficult. We might seem like a great couple from these videos because obviously I only show and film the good stuff but Ingemar and I get annoyed with each other and we have arguments. We also have to cool off and we live in quite a small apartment. There's not really anywhere to escape from each other. So it can be really difficult. This year, we have definitely learned how each other works a bit more. We understand each other a bit more and we've learned some good communication skills. I am smiling and laughing because quite a lot of that has been very fast paced so that we had to deal with all being in a small apartment and Ingmar between jobs and pressures that that brought. So I completely understand if you're in that situation. My number one advice to you is take a bit of time and then talk to each other. And it doesn't matter how annoyed you are with each other and frustrated. Giving a hug to that one person you're allowed to hug can actually break down a lot of those walls. And I have to often remind myself of that. It's good to talk, as they say. Give each other some space and some time. And when you're ready, come back, regroup, 
give each other a hug and talk it out and you'll you will probably grow and be a better relationship for it some stages of relationships it's just it's a point where you need to seek advice from others so reach out to friends reach out to families and if you need to reach out to organizations in your country in your network and try and get the help that you deserve and need at that time usually the new year is a new leaf new page fresh everything it's a chance to start over and decluttering is one of the terms that comes up a lot and i'm not referring to marie kondo and all of that kind of thing although that is good if you need to declutter get decluttering I mean declutter your online life and your friends. Now this can be quite a difficult thing to do but actually you will be grateful that you've done it. I've gone through my Facebook and I've left a load of groups. I spend a lot less time on Facebook now. I've also unfollowed quite a lot of people. Now some of those people are actually still my friends. What they put online is sometimes just a distraction for me. I could obviously say spend a lot less time or delete Facebook or whatever, but I use it for my business. So I have to curate a positive feed where I go onto it and I feel good and I'm enjoying it or I'm motivated and inspired by it. And so I spent quite a lot of time just curating all of the different social media that I go through and even deleting things like Twitter. I don't really use Twitter. I send out my vlogs on Twitter and that is it. So I just deleted it. Okay, this is where I want you to get interactive and comment down below. I want to know what you guys have been doing to not feel so isolated. I've joined our church back home online and I do Sunday service with them and then coffee and chat afterwards and Mia has been doing that with me for weeks now as she gets excited about it. She comes on the screen, waves to everyone, performs, does her cute thing and then she's off again. Having said the declutter thing earlier, I have done quite a bit of decluttering around the house. I do a lot of mindfulness through meditating and tapping. I have an app on my phone where I do tapping. This is something that my mum has gone on for years about and I never really took it seriously until this year I started really getting into it. We're very lucky in Iceland that the pools have reopened so I go for a swim every week, sit in the hot tubs, enjoy all of that if I don't feel like it's too busy there. I go for a walk every single day when there's daylight which is not that often in Iceland. There's only four hours of daylight at the moment. I make sure to get out and get some fresh air and take Mia to the park. She gets me going on the swings and down the slide and all sorts of things covered in snow. I call friends, I call family, we FaceTime all the time with my mum, so Gran Rosa, Mia's cousins, my brother and sister, some friends. This year I actually reconnected with some friends from university which is over 10 years ago now. It was through a very unfortunate incident that we ended up getting back in touch but because of that we're we're back in touch and it's really really great and they are all over the world and we just jump on FaceTime now and it's great to to be back in touch with them. I do spend a lot of my time online because I work primarily online. I have taken on a few design clients now so that means that I'm not necessarily working online but I'm still working a lot on the computer and so it is something that I've been really conscious about is to get off the screen, off the TV, off Netflix, off YouTube, off everything and just go for a walk and take in my surroundings. Even if it's just staying at home and taking in the surroundings and just listening to noises and looking at the plants and talking to my plants but just trying to take in the surroundings and just appreciate nature and appreciate that we are part of nature and that this is just one year in our lifetime that's a short thing, not our lifetime, the year. And so I'm trying to gain perspective on the fact that 2020, yes, it was a tough year, but we as humans are relatively quick to forget. And so I urge you to also not look at 2021 by itself, but actually start thinking and shifting to a two, five, 10 year plan. And I'm gonna try and do this as well and come up with a five year plan. In February, I will have lived in Iceland for five years, which is crazy because that's gone very quickly, but I've also achieved a huge amount in that time. And I think that's really important that we need to actually focus on what we've done, what we've achieved, how we are responding to the challenges around us, 
and actually just give ourselves a bit of a pat on the back because we are surviving, we're doing really well and there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's a vaccine coming and hopefully it's gonna be okay. So to recap, prepare yourself for the new year with realistic hopes and goals. Look back over 2020 and celebrate the wins, however big or small. Prepare yourself for more odd situations and disruptive working. This might go on for another few months yet, but invest in yourself, in your future and your options. Prepare yourself for more isolation, but be aware of what helps you and what makes you not feel quite so isolated and do more of that. And I just wanna say, please know that we're here. If you want to message us, DM us on Instagram or whatever, make sure that you're following us because we want to do our bit and try and help you. It also helps us. It's good to have that online community. Use the comments down below because we're here for each other. It will be really good to see the things that you're doing to not feel quite so isolated and just to see how you're all doing and how you feel about the year ahead. Thanks very much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in another video soon. Bye guys.